Hi there, welcome to another edition of Equipping. I am your host, KJ Ajayi. Today I want to speak to you about hosting the concerns of God and the returns of honor. Hosting God's concerns and the return of honor. In 2 Kings chapter 4, we see the story of the Elisha and the Shunammite woman. And in this, the Bible says that now it happened one day that the Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was, as often as he passed, he would turn to eat some food. And she said to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please, let's make a small upper room for him on the wall and let us put a bed for him and a table, a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. The rest of the story here is history. This woman was a notable woman in the land of Shunem. The Bible tells us that as we read further into our story, she had no child. This need had been a major need, obviously. Like any woman trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I am sure she must have turned in numerous places and done different things. But at this time, this servant of God had the focus of God centered upon him in the land of the living. At every given time when you read through the scriptures, although God saw everybody, you will find out that the capture of heaven from time to time is zeroed in on specific individuals. This had nothing to do with how wealthy they were or how affluent they were or how the color of their race. It had to do with God's program on their life. When Abraham was on the face of the earth, Abraham was not the only man that was. As a matter of fact, he wasn't the wealthiest. The Bible will tell us, but God zeroed down on Abraham. Abraham was the beginning of the manifestation of Jesus on the face of the earth. In Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says that this is the genealogy of Jesus, Abraham. And so the word genealogy there is Genesis. This is the genesis of Jesus, Abraham. So there is something about ministering to a man or to a woman or to a cause that is at the center of God's purpose for the moment. I will tell you one of such causes is discipleship. One of such causes is reaching out to interiors where men are unwilling to go, but to get in there and to take the gospel there. But in this case, that wasn't the case. Elisha had stepped into the shoe of Elijah as the prophet of God and the voice of God over that nation. This rich woman was able to discern him and turn him aside into her house along with her husband and were making provisions for him. However, the day came when the Bible tells us Elijah, Elisha had eaten and said, what would you have me do for you? Now understand this, that the room that this woman made, there really was no room in her house for any other person to stay. The Bible says that she asked her husband, let's make a room to the wall. So they built, they had two pillars built and then put a room to the wall using the wall and the ground as pallor. And we find out from here that that particular place was called the upper room. We know that the upper room is the place of prayer. And so when the time came and their need came to the fore, the Bible tells us that Elisha requested for what their need was. And although the woman had no faith anymore to receive from the Lord, Elisha said, according to this time of life, you will be with the son. And guess what it was exactly so? Now, this is my persuasion. There are dimensions, there are laws in the realm of the spirit that allows for us to come into certain things in God by attending to the kingdom, even though we do not have current faith that is resident with us. This woman had no faith for a child. Like, a, like Sarah, she doubted in her heart that she would ever give back to a child. And so she said to Elisha, don't deceive your maidservant. She did not have faith for that child. But Elisha said, don't worry, by this time next year, you will have a child whether you believe it or not. The same thing with Sarah. Jesus said to her, this time next year, you have a child. It is my prayer that you will engage, you will discern accurately what God is doing around you. You will engage it with the whole of your heart, not looking for any profit. And you will see God come through to meet you at the deepest point of your need in the mighty name of Jesus. Till I come your way another time, I am KJ Ajayi.